ability to recognize mental illness, and more importantly, our population's ability to recognize mental illness in themselves and each other is absolutely saving lives. How depressed do you get at times? I think at the bottom of the pit at times. We do a regular mental health check on everybody with mental health issues. The old days where we used to say to people, get on with life and pull yourself together, I think are far gone. You're not seeing any horror films anymore, are you? I've cut down on them now. Good. I think you've got enough problems looking after yourself without them compounding things. You went through a really bad time at that stage. One in five mothers will suffer with some sort of mental health problem, whether that be depression or even psychosis, uh, during their pregnancy or even up to a year after their pregnancy. What sort of thoughts are these? Like, I wish I wasn't pregnant. The lives she's living at the moment is bad for her in all sorts of ways. She's so isolated, it's not good. Hello, Father Nicky speaking. How can I help? Messini James, please. Hi. Hello. Hi. I'm Dr. Taylor. Nice to meet you, Bill. How can I help? Uh, I'm 21 weeks pregnant, okay. and I saw my midwife uh, on Tuesday. Uh huh. And I was talking to her about how I'm feeling lately. So okay. I'm feeling a bit down. I'm on antidepressants. Right, OK. So I'm on fluxetine at the moment, 20 mm. milligrams. OK. So um, she's suggested that I have my meds. OK. Or that I go on to a safer, low-risk one. I'm just finding I'm not coping. Yeah. I'm, I'm slipping into mm. a depression. I don't think my mind's in a healthy place, so... Yeah. OK, so obviously you've been going through a lot recently. It sounds like it's been a, a fairly involved pregnancy with all of this going on. And when you had your, your daughter, um, did you uh, have any mental health troubles after she was delivered in the immediate period after delivery? I was fine the first three months, but I found after six months, that's when I actually... I, I slipped quite really badly. Sorry. When I saw Mrs. James, she was 21 weeks pregnant. She had been diagnosed with depression prior to pregnancy and was already on medication when I saw her. There's understandably a lot of concern from expectant mothers as to whether they should be continuing with their antidepressants during pregnancy. We absolutely try and discourage patients from suddenly stopping medications during pregnancy because we know that can be related to, to sort of worse outcomes uh, in the long term. Have things gotten to the point where you've had harmful thoughts? Uh, I'd say yes. And can you tell me a bit more about these thoughts? Um, it's, it's difficult to say out loud. So. Okay, would you rather it be us in the room? No, no, ask? it's not that. And any thoughts about harming others? Have you had any thoughts about that? Besides, <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> okay. No, okay. No, 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 no one, no. Here we go. Christian, take a seat, Christian. No, not that. Mine, mate. <laughs> right. How are you doing? Good, thanks, yeah. Yeah? Um... We need to take your blood pressure, apparently. OK. Because I haven't done that for a while. Yeah. Let's do that. So have you popped your coat off? Okay. Have you got any complaints or worries or anything? Or is life really good? Yeah, that's um, always. I was going to ask about the medication, I don't know if you've got to change it or not. I know that the bound results from the hospital. Let's have a look, yeah. I think the person that would change it would be your psychiatrist. OK. I haven't seen them for a while. Yeah, you need to see them. <laughs> so Christian I've known for many years and he has been suffering from um, a type of psychosis with features of paranoia. If you look at mental health issues, you can divide them into psychosis or neurosis. Uh, psychosis. Uh, being 
uh, things like schizophrenia, where the person involved doesn't realise that they have their own mental health issues. A neurosis, like depression or anxiety, um, generally occurs to somebody and they realise they have their own mental health issues rather than the rest of the population. <laughs> Are you still going to the gym? I haven't been for a while, I need to start getting back. So... Yeah. yeah. What are you doing with your days now? Being lazy. <laughs> Being lazy? OK. Yeah. Run me through a typical day for you, Christian. During the week, I go to see my mum and help her out. Yeah. Um, or I just sit down and play computer. OK, what are you doing on the computer? Play games. Play games, yeah. What's your favourite game? Mortal Kombat, FIFA. Yeah? Like those kind of games, yeah. yeah. Or sometimes I go to cinema, maybe. Yeah, OK, yeah. Cinema. You're not seeing any horror films anymore, are you? I don't really, I've, I've cut down on them now. Good. Yeah. And they're good, are they, really? They're not, they're not good for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you've got enough problems looking after yourself without you know, them, them compounding things. You went through a really bad time at that stage. Yeah. Definitely. So you're still living in your own place, though? In Langley, yeah. 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 What about alcohol? Do you drink much or not? I've cut down a holiday drink, you know. Yeah. So what, every even, day? even fizzy drink I've cut down. Really? Good. There's a lot of sugar in that, isn't it? Make you get fat. <laughs> it does, particularly if you're not going to the gym. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. OK, so I think, so I think just to clarify things, so stay on the medication, we're not going to change it, OK, but we will need to do regular blood tests. Every three months. Will you, yeah, will you be able to come back every three months to have yeah, that done? Yeah? yeah. Christian is on a medication called Olanzapine, and he has been on it since as long as I've known him. We do a regular mental health check on everybody with mental health issues, including all blood tests as well. Some of the antipsychotics, for instance, may have a tendency to uh, cause diabetes, for instance. So we'll be doing a regular yearly check to make sure that that hasn't occurred. So we'll do that and I'll keep an eye on those tests just to make sure that there's no... And if there's any problem, uh, if I think things are worsening, then I'll call you back in, OK? Stay on the medication as it is, OK? The things you've got to do now are join the gym, really important, because I think that helps everybody. <laughs> okay, yeah. exercise is really good. And also it stimulates you a little bit. You don't want to be stuck in the house all day. So stay on that. Blood test for you to organise, okay? Gym for you to organise. Okay. Get straight on it. <laughs> Good on you. Okay, mate. Take care. Okay, you take care. Good to see you. <laughs> good to see you as well. And um and if you're worried that anything's worsening in any way, then give us a call and come back in, yeah? Okay. Thank you. Good on you. See you, Christian. Thank you. See you, mate. Bye bye. Hello. Is that the new uniforms? Well, we're wearing the t shirts. Us newbies had first the shirts, but now that we all got t shirts. It's because it's too hot, the shirt. It's a nice colour. Do you think? It goes well with the pink. It gets dirty really quick, though. Yeah, same as these ones. How bad these are, are these shirts, these NHS shirts. Yeah. Well, that rain, you know that rain we had on them yesterday? Hey, would you like me to write it on here? I did yeah. yeah. three wet t shirt competitions and won every single one. Oh, no. It was actually all a see through. Only thing was hiding it, it was that. That was being funny, actually. <laughs> The thoughts that come into our mind, I know that they're not healthy, but I also know that they're not... Okay. Um, they're not ones that I would do. What sort of thoughts are these? <sighs> like, I wish I wasn't pregnant. Mm -hmm. You okay. know? Yeah. Maybe things would be better. Yeah. Give that a week, my darling, OK? OK? Give that a push. Any concerns, we'll write to you. Lovely. Well done. You mind if I use my phone? Stop ringing now. All right, so I'll leave that prescription at reception for you. OK, bye-bye. Who's that? Oh, the kids. The grandchildren, yeah? That's the three-and-a-half-year-old. That's the one-and-a-half-year-old, yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, hello? Come and have a seat. Chris, I'm sorry. You're in demand. It's my family. They... Hello? What sort of thoughts are these? Like, I wish I wasn't pregnant. It's causing a lot of problems, so... 
and with us, and so that's why I just feel if I can try and yeah. get better mentally. Yeah, of then... course. Well, look, you've done the right thing by coming in. I always say to my patients that medications are only part of the solution here and that really the actual cure is the support and the psychological therapies that we can often direct them towards. Mrs James had expressed some worrying thoughts and this did make me also quite concerned and want to get slightly more urgent help for her. And um, so I think what I would like to do is get sort of more specialist advice before we potentially change anything. I think, I think ultimately what we probably need to do is get you in touch with one of the community mental health team who can kind of guide you throughout the rest of the pregnancy. I think also we need to think about the period immediately after you deliver, yeah. making sure that there's enough support for you there, because yeah. that'll be a critical time as well, because yeah. obviously with twins, it's, it's, yeah. it's going to be challenging. There is a special team um, that look after women who have mental health problems in pregnancy and then also in that immediate period after pregnancy as well. Yeah. Uh, and I wonder whether you would benefit from input from them as well. That's Crystal too. Yeah. We're already part of So you're already are we, part we of them? Are part okay, of brilliant. Crystal, okay. yeah. We've got drug, drug and alcohol history, so it's... Okay. And just to, just to ask, um, the, with the drug and alcohol, mm -hmm. is, is that something that's an ongoing issue during pregnancy or is that something that... that... Oh, no, 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 I'm clean now. Okay. Uh, four years in December. Okay. okay. So, yeah. All right. Okay. There's a lot of evidence linking drug and alcohol addiction with mental health problems. In the case of Mrs James, in fairness, she had been clean for four years and I'm not sure in her particular case there was a direct relationship between her past history and her current presentation with her anxieties. Um, but it is always something that we bear in mind when we're targeting the type of support that they need. So I'll contact you before the weekend. Okay. Um, it may be that one of the mental health team, I can give them the, your details if you're happy with that, and they can contact you. Uh, okay. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Most people are trying to escape the heat. Thank you. Oh. Are you okay walking up the stairs? I need the exercise. Good, well, don't we all? I really like that smell. Fresh linen, isn't it? My house is full of air fresheners. Is it? Yeah, I do like that one. There's one in the hallway when you walk in. There's one at the top of the stairs. There's one in the bedroom. There's one in the spare room. There's one in the bathroom. There's one in the living room. There's one in the kitchen. Well, OK. Right, how can I help? Well, you gave me antidepressant pills. Yeah? But they don't work. Oh, really? And is, it, is your mood not good? No, it's not good. It's getting worse. Really? And in terms of feeling down, feeling depressed? Feel down, yeah, all the time. Really? Yeah. All the time. Would you like some talking treatment? No. No? You want... Uh... I sit in my house alone all day for the most part, and I go to bed at night. Do you... The same situation. Do you feel lonely? Yes. You do, yeah, yeah. How depressed do you get at times? I think at the bottom of the pit at times. Just sit forward for me, Paul, and just take your temperature. How fed up would you feel? Well, I don't see any future. Yeah. If you know what I mean. I do, yeah. That's, that's normal. So what do you do all day? How do you fill your time? Doing nothing, usually. Mm-hmm. <coughs> We know that people who are lonely uh, tend to become depressed and the ordinary difficulties of life that we all experience become uh, more of a burden for them. So we would call that a neurotic uh, uh, development. I just wish I had an answer to it all, but I don't. Well, I think there are people that we could get to help you uh, to come in and visit you if you'd want um, that would break the monotony and there's a Slough Seniors group, uh, which is very good. Age Concern will do it. And even the Fire Brigade have a loneliness service oh, that is really yeah. very good. Yes. yes. I'd like to see you with a, a fireman or two <laughs> around. I'm sure that would cheer you up. <laughs> but there, it's a very good service. I think that companionship is really important. Yes. Uh, we all need it. And, and, and then once you get a bit of it, it brings you out of yourself. Yes. And so that, I think, is the way ahead. And I think I'll organise that and yes. get people to, to visit you. So I'd like to change your antidepressant medication. Mm -hmm. Do these pills raise the spirits or...? They do raise the spirits and they raise the K2 
chemical in your brain, serotonin, oh. that is responsible for the feel-good factor. Oh, good. And sometimes in these situations, that's what runs low. Yes. Or it's consumed too fast by the nerve endings. Yes. So it's not a, there's not enough of it there. I see. And what this does is it replaces that. Yes. And that's how it works. So you can give me a call anytime. Yeah. Just let me know how you're doing. And I think those two things together will make a big difference. Good. Yeah. Oh, dear. Good. Because we're growing older in ever-increasing numbers, then unless we get really good at tackling loneliness, we will be paying the price for not doing so in all kinds of ways in society. And that makes a loneliness a key risk factor. And I think it's one that we would ignore at our peril. Good. Thank you very much. Not at all. Nice to see you. Yeah, you, you. you take care. Do you want me to uh, walk with you? No, no. You sure? No, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Can we have a bit of that now? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Right, we don't do it when there's patients in, because they may be suffering from that's asthma. Good. Amy Rosen? Good afternoon. Come and have a seat. Long time. Elsie? Yeah, how long has it been? It's been probably a year, I think. Yeah. I went out a few days ago with my friend and was just going in a park, but I felt like I had to sit down. It was just too much for me to cope with. Mm. And I was like, why do I feel like this? I should be, you know, have energy. I just didn't feel like that. But nowadays, I just feel like I always need to sit down. Everything is a chore, tiredness, lethargy. Yeah, and, and, and even like I'm a, a bit afraid in case I might faint or anything. Not, yeah. not, not all the time, but sometimes. I just mm. don't know what that is about. Any idea? Or? Uh, tiredness can be due to two or three reasons in your situation. One of them is, of course, depression. can make anybody tired. Uh, and the second thing is any other medical condition. Amy lives with her mother. She's got Asperger's syndrome. Uh, Asperger's is a mild form of autistic disorder characterized by awkwardness in terms of social interaction and uh, difficulties in nonverbal communication. Because of that, she's socially withdrawn and hence associated depression. The third thing is any medical condition like diabetes or anemia, low hemoglobin, all these can cause that tiredness, lethargy. I think it's a bit bad for both of us at the moment, it really is. To be honest, Amy's... Yeah, it'd be great if any physical reason was discounted. But the point is, the life she's living at the moment is bad for her in all sorts of ways, and it's not changing at all. Mm. She's so isolated. Her day... So desperate. She does. She, does, she very, very rarely sees anybody. Mm. It's not good. The family dynamics of living with somebody who has Asperger's or depression can be very uh, traumatic. They should receive help, support. They need to have their own sort of respite. Otherwise, we end up with a family full of um, um, uh, depression. And that is not a good sign for the uh, mental well-being of that child. Amy missed three days of Prozac, and I kind of felt that she got more aggressive and verbally and, to be honest, a bit mm. other way. So please do make sure in the future not to miss, uh, even if you miss not more than a day. Yeah. When did you last have any blood tests? I think about, about nine months, six months, seven months ago. I'm really not sure. I, I, I'd be more than happy to have my blood test done. I just, I just want mm. to know, because it's just really frustrating and worrying knowing like mm. what's going on you just don't know and have you have managed to uh, have all these interventions and help and talking therapies and cbt and all that stuff i will be there next week that would be the right way forward okay well, thank you very much all the best Bye. Bye -bye. take care thank you mom Come on, be nice, nice, nice. Oh, yeah. Whose bright idea was it to make self check ins for doctor surgeries? You need shooting. Do you never work? Actually, my doctor surgery, where I go, it works. Hey, one, 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 ADHD. Mm -hmm. 
Um, there's a lot of stuff going on with Damien, his behavioural problems. Um, we spoke to him last week and he said that he's got little miniature voices in his head that tells him to do bad things. And when he's doing the bad things, he also gets another voice in his head that tells him to stop doing the bad things. Um, his behavioural problems have been ongoing for mm -hmm. quite a few years. But to be honest, I think it might be time for a referral with Damien because I only know a certain amount. He has got a lot of anger issues. And give me some examples of his behaviour. Um, behaviour problems. He bullied a child in school for no reason whatsoever. When I asked him why he did it, he turned around and said, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And with his brother and sister, anyone touches his stuff, it's, it's like World War Three in his own little world. There's a lot of anger underlying in there. ADHD sometimes gets used as a sort of catch-all for behavioural problems, which formally it isn't, because there are formal diagnostic criteria to be met. Um, but it often presents with a behaviour problem. You know, when he's playing first to play on his own, he's the class clown at school. There's just very many things that are kind of mm. pushing me towards that. And Do you think things are getting worse? Yes. Just for you, I've come to a closer room. Oh, thank you. <laughs> This keeps coming up on my mouth, and I don't know what it is. I've tried pseudo cream, I've also tried antiseptic cream, and also tried putting neat aftershave on it. Okay. Okay. This one's still swollen quite a bit. I call them Gert and Daisy. Gert's fine. It's all coming off nice and easy, anyway. Let me just pan and brush out after this. <laughs> It's really painful around the elbow. Right, well, I promise not to chop your elbow open today. <laughs> He will open up, but he's got scars on his forehead. Since when I was born, I used to get so angry, angry and I used to stomp up to my room and start scratching my face. Yeah. Like, if he's ever angry, he can't sit still. Mm. He's constantly moving. OK, what's the situation at home? The situation is... Dad around? Happy. Dad's still around, yeah. Um, we've split up. And is it the same father for all, all three kids? Yeah, dad's still around. Yeah, OK. And there's no problem there, there's no issues there between father and son or anything like that? No, no, they get on really well. Dad picks them up from school, I drop them to school. <laughs> um, they get all their bonding time okay. perfect. Right. It's just trying to figure out what it is and then deal with the situation. Yeah. Because it can be quite difficult, because I also have a son who's autistic. So yeah. it can be... Is that older or younger? Younger. Mm. And they just clash all the time. Yeah. OK. <laughs> all right, we'll, um, we'll send you over to the other doctors, Damon, all right? And they can have a look at you and see we can work this anger thing out, yeah? There wasn't enough in the consultation to say he had ADHD. And I'm not so sure that he did have, um, um, but... The, sto the story about how he was behaving at school, his lack of attention at times during the consultation, there was a possibility of it. But more broadly, I, I had a 10-year-old child in my consulting room who clearly had some um, behavioural problems. And so referral to the community team was justified on, the, in the, on those grounds, uh, irrespective of whether his diagnosis was ADHD or not. It's all right, mate. He's going to try and help. Okay. Let's see what they say. Management can be from talking through to drugs and anything in between. Yeah, okay. no, that's fine. If it is that. Yeah. ADHD uh, can be treated in terms of therapy, in terms of talking therapy if it's a behavioural problem, but also with medication. It's quite a difficult condition to treat and requires medication being taken sometimes for many years. OK. Is that all right? Yeah? I'll write to them, you should get a letter and okay. a response Brilliant. and uh, take much. it from there. OK, then. All right. Take it easy. Thank you very bye bye. Bye
I thought I'd come downstairs today, obviously. Yeah, yeah just to help, help you out, you know. <laughs> What's happened since last week on the, uh, all the rest well, of the Well, I took those tablets you've been giving me, which has helped to knock me out, literally, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, Do they knock you out? Yeah, we are, well, I just seem to be sleeping a lot better or a lot more. But okay. I'm still having down days. As yeah. Still having nights where uh, dreaming, yeah, and it mm. just drags you down, yeah. We're not, I don't know what you call them, mm. nightmares or whatever. I just don't know. I just don't know where I'm going or how to get around it at the moment. Everything at the moment in my life just seems to be a fight. David is, a, uh, is well known to myself after seeing him uh, regularly over uh, more than a decade now. Um, he has a number of medical issues um, which have caused him great grief over, over that period of time. More recently, he has injured his hand following a fall brought about by an apparent altercation. Maybe I have something similar to it, like ADHD or something, because all my life I've been mm. like it, yeah? But in the 60s, he was just a bad boy, yeah? And he was sent off to yeah. naughty boy school, which was great, because I, I enjoyed it down there to a certain degree. Mm. <laughs> Anger and aggression are uh, both feelings that everybody has at various stages during their life. Until an emotion starts affecting your lifestyle or affecting other people around you, then it's probably a normal emotion. Uh, but once you cross that line and everybody else is being affected or you're being affected, your health is being affected, uh, then it becomes a problem. Uh, rugby was always been my release of energy, yeah. yeah. When I played rugby and then yeah. in the army, yeah, me and a corporal had a disagreement, right, when I first joined up. And we went off down a boxing ring, hit mm. the shit out of each other for three minutes. And after that, it was as great as anything, yeah, you know what I mean? It, You're not able to do that quite as often these days. In I fact, know. that was part of my school rules when I was at school, was that if you had a disagreement with somebody, you could go, there was, a, we had a school disciplinarian, and you could go to him and ask to box the other person, yeah. and he would provide the gloves and watch the match. But, and the big but is that to do it, you both had to have six cuts of the cane first each because they didn't want everyone to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I had a cane in school, it never worried me. I had a cane first day of secondary school, yeah. And the headmaster went to me, is this how we're going to go on? I went, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what about talking therapies? Well, we, I went to them before, didn't I? Yeah. And we did six sessions, and mm. they're telling me, oh, well, you know, we've got to try and keep you cool. But, mm. well, I don't know. It, we could try. Let's try it again. Yeah. OK, because I think, you know, and, and also when they do the assessment, you need to say, look, we tried something in the past. Yeah. It didn't really work. You know, they've got so many different ways of doing things now um, that it might be worth them just trying a different track this time. Yeah. It's worth a go, yeah. yeah. I'll give out a number of rings and see where we go, yeah? Good. Hang on, mate. All right, thanks See you, mate. Guys. You take care. No problem. Bye-bye. <laughs> If you can't fix it, don't worry, you can pull it off the wall and chuck it out the window. Hello, come in and take a seat. What can I do for you? My psychiatric nurse sent me um, what it was. I, I'm getting like four hours sleep a night, and I'm getting pains in my knees and my thighs and stiffness in my back as well. Okay. And could you write me a letter, just a quick letter, so I can post it with this? Just a few paragraphs to say, like, that I'm schizophrenic. I'll just print out your medical yeah. records. You can send those okay. with you. Do you smoke, Mr Richardson? Do I smoke? Yeah. yeah. OK, can we check your blood pressure while you're here? <sighs> OK, just relax. Are you drinking much alcohol at the moment? Uh, no, not really. Two cans a day. Cans of what? Stella. Schizophrenia is a long-term psychiatric condition that's characterised uh, by several sets of symptoms, one of those being hallucinations, which is where the patient sees or hears things that don't actually exist. Uh, the other one is delusions, which is that they believe in something that you can't give an explanation for. Um, and those two problems in turn can then lead to sort of muddled thinking, uh, which is often how they present. So you're on vitamins yeah. and you're having the injection, yeah. is that right? Yeah. Okay. That's what I think I'm getting side effects of. Yeah. 
the hard part. My jaw goes and everything. Mm. I can't get it to be in line in there. Right. When are you due to see the consultant again? Um, I see her on Thursday. I think what you're describing is some of the side effects of the haloperidol, so you need to tell her about that. She, uh, she, I've already told her. You already her told her. About. But I think what we'll do today is to just run some blood tests and check we're not missing anything. Is that OK? Uh, yeah. Approximately one in 100 patients will experience schizophrenia in their lifetime. Uh, some of them as a one-off episode, some continuing on to be a more long-term problem. So that's your vitamins. Yeah. OK. That you need to put in that envelope and send with you. Um, and if you take a seat back out in reception, the nurse will call you for some blood tests. Right, okay. okay. Thank you. There might be a little wait, but we need to get them done. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Bye, Mr. Bye. Richardson. How are things? Oh, my God, it's monster. Your foot? I felt some, like, bite my leg. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's ballooned up. I had two bites. So how long has it been red like this for? Probably. Four or five, six it, it, days. Is it getting worse? It seems to be getting bigger. And it just turned out like this. It looks like it might be infected. Your legs are a bit swollen, aren't they? It looks like it's got a bit infected, doesn't it? So yeah. I think we need some antibiotics by mouth. Been bitten there as well. And it, I've never, I've never had problems before. Someone likes you. You don't normally suffer with bites. No, never. So we need to be keeping your leg up like that as much as possible. Okay. That's, that's no good to me. Yeah. <laughs> I, need I know. To work, I know. Work. I just wished I'd came earlier. <laughs> Good at Verdi. Hello, Doctor, how are you? Hello, I've got a student with me, is that OK? That's all right. Great. I don't mind. Good. Have a seat, thanks for waiting. The problem is my medication, and I need it because of the, my last uh, card. What, the pharmacy said they haven't got it? Yeah. They have to order it, it's going to take time. OK, so how can I help? I just wonder if what other tablets can I take. So, um. This is a brand of lithium. Mm. So the only thing we can do is give you a different brand. Mm. But the problem is, these different brands have different strengths and may not work in the same way. That's, that's the difficulty. Gerdip has a condition called bipolar affective disorder. We used to call this manic depressive disorder. And this is a condition where the mood uh, can swing between being quite low and then sometimes being quite high. Bipolar affective disorder is not normally cured. We normally treat and manage it. We use lithium because it's a mood-stabilising drug. Let me just have a chat to them. Stay here, OK? All right. How are you finding it? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, doctor's not very easy, I tell you. Our doctors say, like, uh, like a lawyer. My dad said, be a lawyer. I said, no, I don't want to be on a businessman. Sign up your hobnobs and a rich tea biscuit. Oh, I haven't had so rich so tea. Oh. And well, without tea, soggy. Oh. yeah, without tea they're boring. Boiling, like, boiling boil 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 hot cup of tea. Two sugars. But if you leave it in too tea. long, does it really wind you up when you drop it in? Yeah, because yeah, I have to scoop off. it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hate that. <laughs> Okay, how are you? Right, the thing is, I'm really, really depressed. Okay. And I don't know if it's my health or what, okay. it, what it is. Okay. What do you mean depressed, like? What do you mean? How do you feel? Like, I, every day, I, I don't want to get up. Yeah. Things like that, you know? Yeah. I know something's wrong with me, but yeah. I don't know what. How long have you been feeling like that for? for a long time. About three or four weeks, and I don't know what to do. You know, I was, you know, narrowing down where, where it's coming from. Yeah. It's, it's nothing to do with the house. It's okay. nothing to do with my family, my okay. husband, nothing. So home life is good in that sense? Yes, it's brilliant. And there's a wedding coming on and everything, and I don't... I just, um, I just wanted to see if this could be... Uh, Health-related? Yeah. Was there something specific that you're worried about? Any particular problems or any other physical symptoms or anything? Like yeah, because uh, sometimes I get a headache or I feel dizzy. And, OK. And that's what made me think it might be. When do you get the headaches and dizziness? 
when I get really stressed. And when I get stressed, my head feels like it's going to break. Yeah. <laughs> That's how stressed I get. So does that tend to happen more when you're at work or do, is it like in the evenings when you're at home just before bed or how does that work? I think it's generally at work. So thinking maybe could it be me physically yeah. ill? Yeah. Not so we can definitely have a look at that. Yeah. I just want to ask you a few quick questions. Right? OK. Do you ever have thoughts of um, sort of hurting yourself or thoughts of being better off dead or anything like that? No, sometimes I do do that. Yeah? But I wouldn't do it. What kind of thoughts? I know, I know I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I'm a coward. Yeah. But, you know, I feel maybe everybody's better off if I'm not here. So today, yes. I'm going to do your blood test. All right. I brought this early morning thing. Oh, thank you. You're the only person that's bought one today. Yeah. For somebody who's 87, knocking on the door of 90, I would be absolutely loving it if my yeah. blood test were like this. Oh. I appreciate what everybody do for me. You're welcome. Especially you. <laughs> Can I check your blood pressure? Perfect, as always. Oh, good. And now, it's the first time ever I won't have to pay for my prescription. You don't have to. No, I'm 60. It's still the cheapest place in the world. We are very lucky. OK, I've got two options. Right, OK. They've got 15 capsules there. Option one is to take what they've got and then, and then we'll see what happens. That's what I'm thinking, I think. Okay. Option two is to try a different brand, but we'll be guessing the dose. The first thing, option one, we better. OK, so take what they've got. The problem with lithium is it's one of those few medications where you need to have the same tablet from the same manufacturer because the body will absorb uh, and treat different manufacturers' versions of lithium in a different way. If you don't have enough, it doesn't work, but if you have too much, you start to get really unpleasant side effects. And if you take too many tablets for too long, this can be ultimately fatal. And so we have this now what we call a therapeutic window where we give medication and then we do blood tests to make sure that uh, the dose that the patient's got in their bloodstream is between the, the, the top and the bottom level, so they're having the right dose to give them the effect. This happens sometimes with manufacturing medicines, so I'm really sorry this has happened. All right. So, go to the pharmacy. I'll go now. Go now. Give them, give them what they've got, OK? And hopefully they'll be in next week, but if not, come back and see us like you have done and we'll give you the other All right. stuff. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Take Thank care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Have you ever tried doing anything no. like to hurt yourself? No, 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 no. I never go that way. And family-wise, you got kids at home or? Yeah, kids. Everything, everything's brilliant. We all live together. So, it's do you it. find that stressful, or do you? No. No, enjoying it. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like it is more to do with the stress and the psychological kind of element, you know? It sounds yeah. like maybe the depression side of things is, might be true, but yeah. I, I, I don't mind looking at sort of whether there are other physical things, so we can do things like blood tests and we can check that there's not something like thyroid or diabetes yes, or anemia, I'm that kind of stuff. maybe it could be physical yeah. that I'm feeling like this. So why don't we do this? Why don't we start with doing some blood tests? Okay. I'll book you a follow-up with one of us, okay. okay, to kind of talk through the blood test and then maybe talk more about dealing with how you're feeling rather than physical stuff, as long as that all looks okay. Now, uh, now do I need to have a rest from work, you think? Yeah, possibly. So, if work is the main stressor, then I don't mind, yeah. How long do you think you need off? Maybe just two weeks, just to get... Yeah, sure. Just to get your head straight. Do you think you need something like counselling? I don't think it's, it's a, anything like that. Just a, I think it's just pressure, you know, mm. and it's getting to me too much. Okay. I'll do the note for work. Okay. I'll give you an appointment to come back and see one of us. Okay, thank okay? you very much. No problem. Take care. All right. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. See ya. Okay, bye. Bye.
first letter of your surname. Yeah? Oh, Who did oh, it say oh, you're seeing? Oh, <laughs> that's brilliant. Oh, amazing, see? You're going to be out for job shortly. Oh, trust me. Yeah. The amount that we have to do, it's easy to just check yourselves in and go but, straight through. <laughs> see, you're in a good spot there. You can see what the things are up on the wall, can't you? Did it say who you're seeing? Thank you. No worries, too excited. How are you? I'm actually feeling a little bit better than I was a couple of weeks ago. I actually did take the tablets, but the problem is that they were making me feel like I was losing days. I couldn't remember okay. anything. They were just a bit too, well, really short, and they make you feel a little bit worse in the morning. But so, was that, are you still taking them or have you stopped? I them? stopped taking them because I couldn't handle them. I was getting a little yeah. bit spaced out. I was like, right. I okay. didn't want to. So you took them for a few days and thought you're just not feeling well yeah, with them? Yeah, this one, they them. weren't agreeing with me. But I am doing a lot more now. So what have you done? What have you changed? Uh, well, I've got the haircut. <laughs> yeah, that's good. No, I, mean, I, I, just thought, I just like, I'm helping my auntie a lot, a lot more because she's been ill. And so I've been helping her with the garden and stuff like that. Yeah. And try and get, like, um, back up to looking for work and stuff and doing okay. that now. So well, That's really positive, especially because you've done it without medication and you yeah yeah I just, I just thought after the last time I was like you know having a little bit of a word myself thinking yeah, yeah I need to just step out of there like, are you having any of those negative thoughts about yourself no I'm having bad days but I'm not having like you know thoughts that I've had before yeah. what about those episodes where you're feeling like very aggressive and angry are you getting any of those I yeah. still have a little few little issues with that like I'm a little bit like Short tempered a little bit. Right. I and mean, there's been some days where I haven't been arguing, mm -hmm. and then some days I'm like, oh, for goodness sake, like, you know, shut up. Like, <laughs> but. And are you having any counselling at all? No, no, no. No, I've been, I've been speaking a lot to my aunt, and she's been helping me a few things and that, and then my family members have been helping me a little okay. bit more well, with the talking good. situation, but no, I haven't really seen anybody else. Okay. About it. Did I talk to you about the counselling? Yeah, and yeah, you did. So you've got the yeah, number. I've still got the number, just in case. I'm still keeping it with my phone, and okay. that's just in that's case. Fine. Okay. But... Well, you seem to be much more yeah, positive, that's... so that's good. Yeah. Um, and you are doing it without the counselling or medication, so that yeah, again, I feel a bit better than myself now. So. Good. Well, that's all positive and reassuring. Yeah. If you notice things change, though, yeah, just yeah. either give me a ring or pop back in. Yeah, to that's see what me. I was going to suggest. To stay, like you know, come up here and like sort of, yeah. you know. Thank I'll see you, you in a few weeks. OK, thank you very much right. anyway for Take care, that's all right. It's a pleasure. Thank take you. care thank then. Bye-bye. I'll see you in a month. Thank you so You take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Excellent. Thank you very much. No, Joe, let me see. Bye-bye.